Today on FJI, troops establish an adult literacy program and coalition forces help Iraqi doctors get back to work. Welcome to this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. I'm Private Rihanna Douglas. Two Iraqi army divisions have split responsibilities in securing the Al-Mansur district and weeding out terrorists. Sergeant Holly Jensen takes us to Ghazalia and introduces us to an Iraqi army commander dedicated to bringing the community together. For the last four years, coalition forces have provided the majority of security in Iraq. Now that the new Baghdad security plan is in place, Iraqi army forces are taking on more responsibility to protect their own country. A great example of this change can be seen in the Al-Mansur district, where Lieutenant Colonel Jabbar recently moved his soldiers from Basra to take over half of the security operations from his counterpart in the area. This operation is different from other operations. Before, we would go in, clear an area, and leave. Now, we are coming into this area, ridding it of terrorist activity, and staying to provide security for the residents. U.S. commanders are impressed with Jabbar's hands-on approach to finding a solution to the violence that has gripped his new area of operation. When I step back and, and watch him function without a mid chief and without myself there, I see him uh, giving out his cell phone number, his personal cell phone number. I see him explaining to people uh, how he believes the Baghdad security plan is working, which tells me that he studied the problem, understands the problem, understands the, the, the major points and, and the purpose of the Baghdad security plan. And this is from a guy that isn't from here. This is from a guy that just deployed his battalion here from Basra. So I, I think that's all positive. Jabbar knows there is much work to be done. Our goal is to provide the residents with the basic services they need, such as water, electricity, and sewage. Citizens should know we are here to help them, but it's going to take some time. For now, Jabbar and his soldiers just keep pushing to take control of the security for their own people. Army Sergeant Holly Jensen, 7th MPAD, Baghdad. The Al Jazeera neighborhood is starting to reap the benefits of improved security. Specialist Tony Knuff tells us how coalition forces have helped locals return to school and establish an adult literacy program. Task Force 237 with the 1st Armored Division's 1st Brigade in Ar Ramadi, Iraq, have helped create an adult literacy program in an Al Jazeera high school north of Ramadi. In a country where Arabic illiteracy is more common than not, the impact on the area is expected to be significant. Many jobs require literacy tests, including admission into the Iraqi police. Right now, the facility is designed to accommodate 300 locals with an expected turnout of only 100. But when the Al Anbar governor and Ramadi mayor visited the site, 400 women and 150 men were enrolled. Some attribute the large attendance to increased safety in the area. Since the battalion came here, 237 came here in. Uh, October, late October, there's not been a single coalition force casualty in the area. Um, they found numerous cache sites. You know, the, uh, the enemy would uh, either intimidate contractors so bad that they wouldn't do projects or they sometimes even blow up the projects uh, to deny it, anything that has to do with coalition forces. This is one of the, the first tribes that really strongly started supporting coalition forces in the area. The literacy program, as well as a new health clinic, which opened with help from coalition forces, serves an area of between four to 5,000 local Iraqis. In order to establish the program's permanence, it will need to be endorsed by Governor Mamoun Samir Rashid al-Awane. The coalition remains hopeful. Uh, once the program is deemed successful, uh, we are working with our governor's office through the government support team there to expand throughout the district and the province of Al-Anbar. Six new classrooms are under renovation as part of the coalition's aid to the school. The Iraqi government will continue supporting the operation of both the school and the new health clinic. With the 1st Armored Division, Ramadi, Iraq, I'm Specialist Tony Knuff. After the break, coalition forces help Iraqi doctors get back to work. Stay with us.
For the regional headline update, we check in with specialist John Sheldon at the news desk. Iraqi security forces will soon transition from AK-47 to M-16 rifles as they're assigned weapons. Lieutenant General Martin Dempsey, commander of the Multinational Security Transition Command Iraq, says although keeping track of weapons has been challenging for Iraqis, new security measures will be implemented as the new weapons are phased in. For Iraqi soldiers who are issued a weapon will, will go through a system of biometrics, fingerprint, retinal scan, and this is, by the way, at the request of the Minister of Defense. And so it'll be, it will be logged in an automated modern database, who got what weapon, what's the serial number of that weapon, and we'll be able to, I say we, I mean uh, the, the government of Iraq will be able to track those weapons very, very carefully. Coalition forces killed 16 terrorists and detained 19 others during separate operations Sunday. During a raid southeast of Fallujah, the troops killed one of the terrorists and detained 19 suspects. They also found large amounts of chemicals used to make IEDs and more than 50 pressure plates. And south of Baghdad, the coalition conducted airstrikes on a known Al-Qaeda meeting place, killing 15 terrorists. They also uncovered several weapons caches and two anti-aircraft machine guns. With headlines from around the region, I'm Specialist John Sheldon. As Operation Fard al Kanun brings increased security to the Baghdad area, displaced citizens are returning to their neighborhoods. Specialist John Sheldon tells us how coalition forces are helping Iraqi doctors get back to work and providing the care their patients need. It's a quiet day off Baghdad's Haifa Street. 1st Cavalry 2nd Brigade is helping Iraqi doctors reopen a much-needed clinic. It's, it's, a, it's a win-win situation for them uh, because, you know, they're, they're doing what they, you know, were trained to do, see patients, and they're seeing their own people. Um, but, it, but it also, uh, I also kind of get them involved in, in helping to open up clinics that were closed before in their neighborhoods uh, and, and I allow them to be uh, play a large role in the decision-making process as to what clinics uh, we're going to try to focus on. This public health clinic serves Baghdad's Kirk district but it has been closed for three months now. Before the security situation in Baghdad deteriorated, doctors here saw about 100 patients every day. Today they expect as many as 250. Because of the security situation, no doctor, no paramedical staff, no anyone can reach, can reach this center. But because of the measurement which are taken by the Iraqi army and, and of the coalition forces, this area becomes safe and we start to come daily to provide the primary health care for those who are in urgent need for the primary health care. Patients come in with complaints ranging from diabetes to epilepsy or for help with pregnancies or routine childhood illnesses. One of the unfortunate realities of life in Baghdad today though is the ongoing conflict. Many of our patients are, uh, are a victim of previous violence. Some of them are, but some of them have uh, bullet injury, some of them have missile injury to rehabilitate them, to give them more advanced management which are not present because of the security situation. We arrange for them another visit to more sophisticated center like rehabilitation center. Missions like this one pick up where security operations leave off, improving quality of life for local residents and making plenty of new friends. From Baghdad, I'm Specialist John Sheldon. On the next edition of Freedom Journal Iraq, Iraqi soldiers teach tribal songs and dance to their American counterparts. The majority or the famous way to dance is uh, the Bedouin tribe. Uh, they call it is uh, Daha. Yeah. And that does it for this edition of Freedom Journal Iraq. Tune in next time for more stories from the front lines of Operation Iraqi Freedom. And from all of us here at AFN and Freedom Journal Iraq, stay safe out there. <laughs>